What's going on everybody, it's Frito here for your Overwatch. Today I wanted to tackle a question that I get asked quite frequently, when is it a good idea to solo heal? And those of you playing at home might be asking yourself, one healer? I always have zero in my game, so you even get one? How's that possible? Well, you gotta convince your Hanzo to swap to a healer, and then you'll have one, and then we can start talking about when it's a good idea. Well, first and foremost, we're going to take a few examples of cases where you definitely are going to want to prefer a solo healer, but it also works in those cases where you're working with wonky picks, and even sometimes a team comp that you assume should be working isn't working, and swapping off to that solo healer might be the answer. But once you learn some of these things, you could do it ahead of time, which is what I set up on this Junkertown defense. Now, Junkertown is one of the best examples for this strategy. We'll show a couple other maps as well, but this is a bit isolated to Junkertown itself, where we've seen, especially on the countering the pirate trip strategy, a lot of teams went two or three tanks with one healer, multiple ranged damage sources, just because the architecture of the map allows for a lot of ranged firepower to be set up with it being very expensive to try to dive to go get it. Most aggressive plays on this map you can see coming, at least on this first point, and with that being the case, you can set up for a lot of greed in your backline. What do I mean by that? Well, a stable backline would be two healers typically and the more greedy your backline is is when you start taking picks that might amp up your firepower but require you to play a bit better a bit cleaner but with the added positive of having the potential to have a much more powerful comp because of course a stable team comp in overwatch might work a bigger percentage of the time but when you can cheat out in these ways and find cases to go for a single healer it's going to overall amp up your team's threat and overall team damage to the point where if the opponent doesn't play cleanly enough and you play a cleaner game, a more disciplined game, they're really going to struggle to find an opening. And that's the general idea of how solo healer works. It requires a few things. Your healer player obviously to play good enough to avoid threats, which is easier than you might think because you have extra damage on your team to sort of hide behind when someone tries to kill you, but it also requires your tanks to play incredibly disciplined to make sure that they're not taking extra damage. So you can make use of the fact that you have extra firepower on your team rather than more brawling sustain. Now in the first gameplay in the background, we're watching me swap to Reinhardt because the enemy range damage was making my Orisa pick feel a bit flimsy, whereas Reinhardt I can more fluidly reposition as the range characters get angles on me. But typically when you go for a low healing comp, a character like Orisa is really good in the main tank slot. That's why the Ana Zen combo often is working with the Orisa bunker comp because it's a composition that doesn't want to brawl at all. Orisa Orisa doesn't want things up close and personal, she wants to keep them further away, but as soon as I see that the enemy has even more range damage, then I just go ahead and play a very conservative Reinhardt on the cart, don't throw away my life, just make sure I protect my backline, and because the enemy isn't coordinated enough, they just walk into our damage, get really frustrated and tilt off the side of the planet, to be honest. I think a lot of times when people think of solo healing, they imagine the nightmare scenarios of struggling to heal a bunch of more or less selfish teammates that aren't trying to play together but this is a real comp to try to utilize. It might feel a bit quick play and deathmatchy, but as I showed in the past, pro teams have definitely pulled out solo heal comps to great avail, something that I think they should even do more. We'll cover that a little bit later, but I think what oftentimes people forget is making sure that your picks synergize with one another and you have reasons to combine different heroes together. So at the hero select screen here again, I have a teammate that's trying to play Zenyatta for the team who's gonna provide some healing, some ranged damage, discord orbs obviously great, but I actually ask to have them take off the Zenyatta to go to another hero like Tracer or Sombra who can play off on their own and make space that way. It's a very interesting term that always is really hard to explain. It's very easily misused, but a shield can make space in front, but also different types of ranged or mobile threats can also make space on their own as well. Because if you have a Widowmaker out in the back, possibly a Farah, Hanzo, things that can get up on the high ground and be a ranged damage threat threat or characters like Sombra or Tracer that can self-sustain and harass in the enemy's backline forces 
their resources to turn. And as you can see, as I'm rolling around the cart here as Orisa, I'm not really taking any damage, but I'm able to position my bunker in a way where it blocks most of the damage. I don't need a ton of healing and we're still winning this team fight. As long as I avoid damage hitting my face, keep the bunker in the right spot, crowd control targets, we're just able to deathmatch and we have more damage and threats than the enemy can deal with. It is of course a bit of a risk because our honor player has to play quite well to make sure she avoids all the damage but like I said the win condition for the enemy team isn't as simple as just diving that Ana because in order for them to do that they're gonna be walking into a Widowmaker line of sight a Torbjorn on attack the bunker in the way with the crowd control coming from the Hulk essentially what we did there is the pirate ship strat with the little wrinkle in it having a Torb there instead the guy did ask if we were down to synergize around the Torb so I really appreciated that the team was down so we built around it typically that's not something I want to have happen which is what we're going to see in the next comp where we're playing with a Symmetra one trick who I gotta be honest does far less for the team than Torb right now much easier hero to counter but it's going to require the same rules and the same solo heal approach in order to make this work at all because think about it who could we really sacrifice in this team comp that we're rolling out of the spawn right now to have another healer the sim can't make use of healing really she either gets her utility or she doesn't if we drop either the May or the McCree for a healer we'll get in brawls but won't be able to finish any kills because we won't have the reliable damage. It's been a while since I've gone on a streak of preaching the gospel of clean engagements, but it's much more important that your engagements are clean and make sense, more so than just having enough healing in order to fight. A lot of people tunnel vision on their own play and wanting to get healed and wanting to keep fighting themselves and get frustrated when they don't get healed, which is why oftentimes people either don't know how to play in a single healer setup or don't know how to leverage it to be an advantage for them. The goofy thing is, with the sim on attack, because we kind of traded out favorably and got a teleporter set up on point, now we're at a massive advantage all of a sudden. Now, what I'm not showing on screen is when we were defending on streets phase where Symmetra has nothing to do whatsoever and it got absolutely wrecked, but this video is not so much about playing around the sim. It just so happens that the best examples that I had of playing around a solo healer happened to be oftentimes trying to synergize around builders or niche picks in general. But it's important for me to bypass that as well and also look at the general context of how this applies no matter what heroes you're talking about. Now I'm going to talk a little bit more about the hero choices that you're going to want to be making to make sure that you can get this to work and then I'm going to break down a clip of me utilizing smart tank play to play around the fact that I personally have less healing as a tank player. I think it's pretty intuitive that one of the best things you can do playing in a solo healer comp is to make sure that you have enough self-healing characters that can kind of compensate for the lack of healing that your support's going to get out but one step further beyond that point it's even more important that your tanks play in a clean disciplined way to not take unnecessary damage especially going into this third point i had to swap onto the dive tanks because they're putting way too much damage on the high ground and shooting down on us whereas we could kind of cheese out getting value out of the sim by pushing into close range engagements on the point of first sticking in a teleporter for good measure here we're not going to get away with that stuff because they just have way too much of a chokehold on this setup and in fact time Time's running low. The game is about to be going into overtime and we're in a must win engagement so everything has to work perfectly for this to make any sense. I fly up top to support my Winston and it's important that one, I find my value without taking too much damage to my face and I support my Winston in doing his job. And I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place here because there's a damage threat on the low ground with the Junkrat flanking, we know the soldiers up top and we somehow have to contest the cart all at the same time and I have to decide how to make sure not to overstay my welcome. The Winston goes to clean up the Junkrat on the backside and I'm able to DM a few of the bombs in order to really tip that duel in the Winston's favor. I sort of calculate in my head that he's going to be able to win that duel so I don't aggress that direction and soldier pops sights over the top which as a diva player is always your number one priority you gotta clear that up otherwise the entire fight's going to be over he is able to kill my far teammate but far hits a rocket I believe making for easy cleanup for me regaining the high ground and now I have a little bit of health to work with and I want to make sure that I try to navigate into this bubble to avoid damage yet again be behind the cart get back to my healers we took out the flanker threat we took out the high ground threat and because the enemy team didn't focus down either of the tanks we played cleanly avoided a lot of damage we were able to win this game without even utilizing healing much 
Now, that's not really an ideal scenario. In no way do I suggest that you try to play Symmetra into third of Hollywood, but I'm gonna show you another example where I'm able to utilize solo healing myself to great effect on King's Row. And at this point of the video, I'm gonna talk about the best support selections in order to make use of this strategy. I think hands down, the best hero for solo support is Mercy. I think you can get it to work with any of the supports as long as you're good enough with them. And of course your teammates play around the fact that you have less overall healing to work with. But the reason why I think Mercy is the best is because one, off of a solo healer, you're going to have more range damage. At least you should. I think it's really good to start stacking in Hanzo, Soldier in the backline, a Widowmaker, maybe not all three at once, but making sure you have two tanks that play similar to how I described on the Hollywood game, but have the ranged firepower in order to be a massive poke threat for them to even dream about coming back to killing your solo healer. And because you don't have enough healing for your tanks to really brawl fluidly anyway, and they should play a bit more defensive in nature, making sure they use their abilities to take damage, not their face, Mercy can spend a lot of her time damage amping those ranged threats to really win out that ranged poke battle convincingly. On top of this, if there is someone harassing the Mercy, she has the best self peel in the game. She doesn't need another healer to heal her as long as she can guard an angel away. And on top of all of that, if someone gets picked off, she has the mid-fight res. With all these things considered, I think it's really hard to compete with Mercy in the solo healer slot, but as long as you play Moira flawlessly, your tanks can get a little bit more involved, perhaps. If they can't touch you on Ana, of course, she has all the plays that she can make, but I think overall, Mercy is the go-to call. And you may be asking yourself, well, is Mercy's ultimate going to be enough? Should you have a stronger defensive ultimate? And I say, realistically, no. Because your team's going to be spread out like a firing squad most of the time anyway, you're not too susceptible to big ultimate combos. And even if you are, you just sort of have to take those losses on the chin and win the game in the mid fight. Because if you have a strong firepower team with low ult fight potential, you're just a mid fight team. And that's where you're going to have to win your game. And that principle is going to be really important into my last example, where we're going to take a look at the LA Gladiators, who are a very exciting team right now for a lot of reasons. Fissure, best main tank in the league right now. Hydration's been popping off. We got more videos coming on them and their really cool play, but I want to show an example of where they actually failed to try to utilize one of these ranged firepower comps because they had that secondary healer in Zenyatta, at least in my opinion. This map of Sanctum has kind of just slowed down to a halt, no pun intended with the Orisa ability, but Oftentimes, both teams in the Overwatch League play really cagey and ranged and poke, where there's just two Orisa bunkers firing at each other, and if you're going to play that style of comp, you have to know what your win condition is. Oddly enough, I'm going to say that the worst picks for this situation for the Gladiators is having both Zenyatta and D.Va in the same team comp. You might call me crazy for that because Zenyatta and D.Va are some of the strongest heroes in the game. They have almost 100% pick rate for both of them in the Overwatch League, but the problem is it doesn't satisfy the win condition of the situation they're in. The D.Va doesn't provide shield break from range, which they badly need, in order to win the bunker attrition ranged battle. And really, D.Va is going to be best for peeling for backline harasser threats that just aren't coming from the enemy team. Bayam don't have that. Instead, they have the Widowmaker and Soldier. And overall, because Logix kind of outplays the value of what Hanzo gets, since Widow has a grapple shot that can pretty easily outposition the single Orisa bear that they're setting up, Logix is going to be getting more picks in this match overall. And then on top of that, there's a bit of an issue of having Shad on the Zenyatta here because there is no ultimate combo that you're worried about saving yourselves from with Transcendence. And because there's a big barrier in the way all the time anyway, a lot of Zenyatta's damage potential is dropped off because Discord Orb is what really makes Zenyatta a scary threat. That and of course, range snipe right clicks. But if Zen can't find those, there's little reason to pick the Zen here. And instead, if they're gonna have Asher on the Hanzo here, I think you could just put Zen on a soldier at this point in the game come out, convincingly win the shield break battle, and then your firing squad wins entirely. If you have a Risa barrier and they don't, and you have all this ranged firepower, they're going to have to change up their play. The casters on
on this match were a bit critical of Asher, who didn't really get much done with the Hanzo, since there was the big barrier in his way all the time, but I think that's more of a problem of the team comp not satisfying the win condition than it is the Hanzo pick being bad, because we've seen these slow bunker ranged pickoff comps be played before, especially on Junkertown, like I said earlier in the video, but it was done with a supreme level of firepower getting selected to play around the bunker, because you want to largely avoid damage, use your shield to block most, if not all, of the damage coming in, and have overwhelming firepower to win the engagement that way. And overall, I think just having both the D.Va and the Zen in the same team comp is kind of bad. Putting in the Soldier for the Zen, or the Roadhog for the D.Va, or maybe both, would convincingly allow them to win the Shield Break War and make their team comp work. It's about committing to the team comp, because remember, we almost had that same problem on the Junkertown game, where my teammates wanted to play Zen, and it might have sounded crazy to some of you for me to say, no, I don't want Zen, we need another threat, we need more range, more crowd control, more damage on our end, more threats, because that's the win conditions for this type of engagement that they were dealing with. Well, guys, that's everything I have for today. I hope this video was helpful in trying to explain when you can turn what sometimes is a downside of having only one healer into kind of an upside or a way to win games that you otherwise thought you may have lost at the hero select screen when you only have one healer. If you enjoyed the video and you found it useful, please leave it a like. It really does help us out. Let us know that you're enjoying the content. If you haven't already, please subscribe because we upload each and every day. So you're going to hit the bell icon so that you get notified when our videos go live. Link to the description is our Twitter where we tweet out news, updates, and dank memes. That's been it for me. I've been Frito for your Overwatch. I'll see you guys next time.